Okay, we're now going to go into an Old Testament teaching, a very important Old Testament teaching, as well as Ezekiel 38 and 39, uh, which is uh, Gog of Magog. And both of these are really, really important to understanding uh, Revelation. It's going to really help us connect the dots. So, Jacob's trouble. Um, without really defining it, let me just read some scripture in the Old Testament because I think scripture in itself uh, will define itself. Jeremiah 30, verse 7, we read, How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. So we're already being told it's going to be an awful day, a day of trouble for Jacob, Jacob being Israel, the people of Israel, but there will be salvation out of it. He will be saved out of it. Let's read on Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people, that being the Hebrews, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name shall be found in the book. So we see it's going to be not only a time of trouble, but as never has been since there was a nation. Until Israel has become a nation, it's never been this bad till that time. But once again, the Jewish people shall be delivered. That is, everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. So there is a little bit of a qualifier there. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, because now we're going back to, shall we say, the, the origins of Jacob's trouble. And the origins is this. Uh, the children of Israel, as we know, they, uh, they were rescued out of Egypt. Uh, they uh, turned their backs on God at a betrothal covenant on Mount Sinai, so they wandered in the desert for 40 years. And now they're getting ready to cross the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And... In this scenario, God instructs Moses to give a warning to the children of Israel. And we read in Deuteronomy 4, verse 26, where he says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that you will soon utterly perish from the land that you're going over the Jordan to possess. You will not live long in it, but will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations with the Lord, where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve gods of wood and stone, the work of human hands that neither see nor hear nor eat nor, nor smell. So in other words, they're going to follow their heart's desire because they've been turning their backs on God. But from there, you will seek the Lord, your God. And the good news in all this, you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you're in tribulation and all these things come upon you, when in the latter days, in the end of times, you will return to the Lord your God and you will obey his voice. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not leave you or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers that he swore to them. So God will honor his covenant that he swore to their fathers, to the father Abraham. Um, very, very sobering words. Zechariah chapter 13, 
Verse 8. In the whole land, declares the Lord. What is that? In the whole of Israel, declares the Lord, Yahweh. Two-thirds shall be cut off and perish. So two-thirds are going to pass. Two-thirds are going to be destroyed. Uh, two-thirds will be killed. And one-third shall be left alive. And I will put this third into the fire and refine them as one refines silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say the Lord Yahweh is my God. So I think scripture has done a pretty good job here of describing just what Jacob's trouble is all about. First and foremost, it's Jacob rebelling against God. It's Jacob turning its back against God and Jacob, of course, being Israel. And because of that, there is going to be tribulation that they have never, ever experienced before. And there will be deaths. Two thirds will perish. But out of that, that third, God is going to refine them. He's going to test them. They will call upon his name. He will answer them. And he will say, they are my people. And they will say, the Lord is my God. Now you might say, what is going on? Why, why is God picking on the Hebrew nation? Uh, well, first and foremost, he chose them. He told them, if you'd only just acknowledge me as God, I will make you my most treasured possession. I will bless you beyond uh, your human imagination. But they turned their backs. So what about Israel today? Well, let's look at Israel today, because here's the spiritual state of Israel today. Israel, as a nation, is one of the more, if not most, secular countries in the whole world. That may come as a shock, but a large percentage of Israelis identify themselves as agnostic, as atheists, as New Age, and even Eastern religions. And even many Orthodox Jews have claimed that they do not believe in God. Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv claims to be the gayest city on earth. Did you hear me? The little state of Israel. The city of Tel Aviv claims to be the gayest city on earth. And in 2018, their gay pride parade had about 250,000 in attendance, a quarter of a million in this tiny nation. Israel has a very high abortion rate, but not as high as the United States. So don't think for a second the United States is in God's favor. In fact, if you read all these uh, points, just about every one of them, we, we ace Israel. The other thing is, well, what about, you know, all practicing all these uh, feasts and customs and, and all these religious ceremonies? Well, here's the, the bottom line on that. Many practice Jewish customs, but it's part of their cultural identity. It's not them doing it out of their hearts, giving glory to God. Okay, and in God's words in Romans 2.24, the name of God is blasphemed. Why? Among the Gentiles, why? Because of you, because of you, Israel. So um, God is not happy with Israel yesterday and today and in the near future. However, God is also a God that keeps his promises, and he has chosen Israel. Uh, Israel, um, he will respect his covenant to Israel. Now you might say, well, does this give Israel a free pass into the kingdom? No, not at all. But what it does, it gives Israel, the Jewish people, a special privilege 
And this special privilege will mean that God will go out of his way and he has made a new covenant. And out of that, there will be a remnant that will be saved and that will be part of the promised kingdom, the promised Israel, the promised Jerusalem. So let's move on. Uh, some other very important scripture to remember. And remember, we started this whole course on Matthew 5, 17, where Jesus said, do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. Further from the truth, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And this is something that the Jewish people need to take to heart in their Hebrew Bible. And also us as Christians, the saints, we need to take to heart that everything is written in the Old Testament, in the law and the prophets, and then also has been uh, clarified and added to in uh, the New Testament and in Revelation. It's all shall come to pass. And then to the saints, uh, to the church, uh, there's some other scriptures because uh, um, there's almost like two different pathways um, in the, in the Old Testament and in Revelation. Uh, the path of, of the Jewish nation of Israel and the path of the church, uh, which all will come together under Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation. Okay, not Jacob's trouble, but to tribulation and to put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations. Well, isn't this also talking about Jews? Only those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, only those that are messianic, because this is all boils down to, in Jesus' words, for my name's sake, for my name's sake. That's the reason why you will be hated. That's the reason why you will be put to death. That is the reason why you will be taken up to tribulation. And Revelation 12, verses 13 through 17, we read about when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down the earth, the dragon being Satan, he pursued the woman who was Israel, who had given birth to the male child, that being Jesus. Uh, but the woman was given two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to a place where she is to be nourished for a time, times, and half a time. That's three and a half years. The serpent poured water out like a river, uh, poured water like a river out of his mouth and the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help the woman and the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. So during this time, God is protecting uh, the Hebrews that have fled into the desert, into the wilderness. And then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to do what? to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. That will be the Christians. And as we read further in Revelation, not only does he make war with them, but God grants him the authority to go after Christians uh, to kill and to cause great tribulation. Let's move on, because now that we've kind of set the stage and we're really focusing on Jacob's trouble, even though we probably have to, to you know, lightly look at and separate uh, the Christian saints from all this, but let's go back to Jacob's trouble. Okay, first and foremost, this is pretty well explained in Isaiah, from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1, talking about the final exile and the exodus where we read, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. So that will be the Messiah. And a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge, but what his eyes see. So he does not judge what's on the surface or decides disputes by what his ears hear. 
but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. So beyond a shadow of a doubt when we're reading this, this is Yeshua, the Messiah, talking about his second coming uh, where he will eradicate um, all evil and establish his kingdom. So let's read on. Verse six. The wolf shall not dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. So once again, this is very, very messianic. This is God's kingdom uh, that is being ushered in, a kingdom that will have everlasting peace and prosperity. Let's read on, because now we, we hear some familiar words. In that day, in that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a single for the peoples of, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. In that day. What day is this? This is the day of the Lord, the, the second coming of Jesus, the parousia, in New Testament Greek, in that day the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant that remains of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and, and from the coastlands of the, of the sea. He will raise a single for the nation and will assemble the banish of Israel and gather the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. So you're going, what's going on here? The Lord is gonna extend his hand yet a second time? Uh, well, what was the first time? The first time is when the Lord extended his hand uh, when he delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. Why do we say that? Because that's what scripture says, Exodus 3.20. So I will stretch my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders I will do in it. And after that, he, Pharaoh, will let you go. But also in this prophecy, um, we're talking about recovering the remnant, the exile, um, those that had been dispersed. Um, what are we talking about here? Well, yep. There will be a second exile. Uh, the military campaign, remember, that we read about uh, in quite detail in, in um, Daniel chapter 11 and a few other places. That campaign is going to what? It's going to allow the Antichrist to come into Jerusalem to abolish the daily sacrifice, to set up the abomination of desolation. That's what? It's going to start the great tribulation, but it's going to start something else too. It's going, to, it's going to start a massive exile of Jews. Remember what Jesus says. He says, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let the, leader be, uh, let the reader be aware and flee, run, escape. Don't even get your belongings. Run, run for your life. And there's a reason for it. Let's read on, verse 13. Because then it goes on, it says, Well, the jealousy of Ephraim shall depart, and those who harass Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah, and Judah shall not 
not harass Ephraim. So the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, they're actually going to get together and be united. But they shall swoop down on the shoulder of the Philistines to the west and together shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put out their hand against Edom and Moab and the Ammonites shall obey them. So there's actually, there's going to be um, an expansion of Israel, expanding territory to the east and to the west. But let's read on. And the Lord Yahweh will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt and will wave his hand over the river with his scorching breath and strike it into seven channels. And he will lead people across, not in boats, just like in the days of Exodus. He will lead people across in sandals. And there will be a highway from Assyria for the remnant that remains of his people. And there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. So the tongue of the Sea of Egypt, this is the Red Sea. Once again, we're going to see the Lord splitting the Red Sea, uh, making dry passages across the river now to allow what? Passage for his people. Here's a couple other references uh, of this event in Habakkuk. Chapter three, verse 11, it's where it starts off, the sun and the moon stood still in their place. Well, we've already started to see a little bit of this. This is the sign of the coming of Jesus Christ uh, that we're gonna hit on, um, in fact, very soon in the sixth seal. You march through the earth in fury. You threshed the nations in anger. You went out for the salvation of your people. You crushed the head of the house of the wicked. You trampled the sea with your horses, the surging of mighty waters. This is also mentioned in uh, Zechariah 10.10, 10, where I will bring them home <clears throat> from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria, and I will bring them to the land of Gilead and to Lebanon, till there is no room for them. He shall pass through the sea of troubles and strike down the waves of the sea and all the debts. Uh, cut off here, but from the sea. So let's read on. Because now I think we've done a good start of setting up what Jacob's trouble is all about and the fact that Jacob's trouble, which is different from the tribulation, but there are some similar overlaps. Uh, but there is going to be another um, persecution in Jerusalem that uh, the Jewish people are going to be exiled, whether it be voluntary or involuntary. They're going to be scattered out once again. So uh, with that, we'll go into the battle of Gog and Magog, but we will do this in part two of the video.